I'm actually surprised. I'm actually surprised that this has happened to Rogan. Because Rogan was always the type of person who I felt like was really... Um, I think he was always steadfast in his opinions, but he was also somebody that was willing to be open to other bits of information that would maybe disprove his opinions and be honest enough and kind of upfront enough to kind of look up and say, oh shit, I got that one wrong and kind of move on with it, right? Um, And I also thought he was somebody that would kind of just assess what's in front of him, honestly, without being a bit partisan. But I guess the older he's got, the more money he's attained, the fact that he lives in Texas now has kind of changed his worldview. So now he's become a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a tiny, 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 tiny bit of a Trump apologist, which is not a bad thing, right? You can like Trump as much as you want to. You can apologize for whoever you apologize for and kind of stand for them. But I just find it odd that Rogan's become that guy. Like he's become those same type of freaks, those MAGA freaks who talk about fucking Trump coming back and restoring America to what it once was and giving everybody fucking gold bullion bricks and shit. He's turning to one of those kind of freaks and weirdos because somehow Joe Rogan is interpreting that whole affair where Trump said, oh, there's going to be a bloodbath. He's somehow now using that whole speech and that whole press conference, that that slip of the tongue whatever trump did in that regard that was a hor- that was horrendous kind of use of words he's now using that as a stick to beat the mainstream media with when if you watch the actual press co- well, when you actually when you actually, when you watch the actual speech in full in context it's there's only one conclusion you can come away from it is that trump is an absolute psycho for saying the words that he used in that fucking speech maybe he didn't mean it that way but the way he said it insinuated <laughs> <laughs> that if he didn't win the election he was expecting a bloodbath from the streets of america that's what he sounded like he said right there's no other way you can interpret it again i know the mainstream media like to twist what trump says and make him say one thing or the other thing but let's also be honest with what we hear when you hear what you hear just interpret it how you interpret it and kind of go from there anyway all that to say um he played the clip f- um, for one of his recent guests and he somehow still didn't was he still wasn't able to admit to what he heard and he's kind of brain broke and i'm not gonna lie it's kind of it's kind of um heartwarming to see somebody push back because i don't think rogan gets a lot of pushback on his show anymore he's just too famous unfortunately but it's nice to see um robert Hyde kind of push back at him a little bit and say no he actually said a fucked up thing he shouldn't have actually said that and obviously he sounds fucking nuts so let's play the clip here so you can see rogan trying his best to defend trump but you can't really defend him in this case because what he said was pretty indefensible and pretty crazy. Let's play the clip. I'm sure you're aware of this uh, recent Donald Trump speech where he talked about a, a bloodbath. Oh God, yeah. And what the the actual yeah the actual phrase was. What see if you can find that, Jamie, because it's actually important to highlight how not just inaccurate, but it's just deceptive the media was in their depiction of what he said and that they are taking this quote out of context and trying to say that there's going to be a civil war if he doesn't get elected which is not what he was talking about at all see pull it up because it's it's so disturbing that they would first of all that they would think that they could get away with it in this day and age with all right, the scrutiny with, yes. and all the with with social media and all the independent journalists that exist now which is one of the more interesting things about the dev- demise of corporate media the demise in trust trusting corporate media is at an all-time low and so this has led to a rise in true independent journalists the the real ones out there the matt taibis the mm-hmm. glenn greenwalls the people that are actually just trying to say what is really going on and what are the influences by I also find it hilarious how the two journalists that Rogan can only, the two you can only name are Matt Taibbi and Glenn Greenwald. Those are the only two trusted journalists out there. Out of all the journalists that exist in the world who are doing great work, who are uncovering truth, who are speaking truth to power, who are, you know, uncovering corruption, um, highlighting just causes, um, highlighting voices of people who are not being kind of listened to. The only people who are really speaking for the truth I'm Matt Taibbi, a fucking Glenn Greenwald. I fucking love Joe. Behind these things and why are these things happening? But this one was bizarre. When I saw it, and then I saw the actual speech. Let's play the actual speech. Yeah, I have the actual speech. The headlines <laughs> okay. are different, but I'll just play this. Let's speech. play the actual speech. speech. To China, 
if you're listening, President Xi, and you this and I it. are friends, but he understands the way I deal. Those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now. I'm not gonna lie, it is quite nice to hear his voice again. I know, I know he's a fucking psycho, but it is quite nice to hear his cadence and just how he speaks. <laughs> you know the way he uses words there's big monster trucks like what does big monster factories president g he's a nice guy i like him you know it's like what like he's so unpresidential it's fucking incredible like it's so funny to see him but would i want him to be leading my country of course fucking not the guy's a fucking lunatic but just hearing his voice again on stage look at that hat Look at that fucking hat. Look at how ridiculous that fucking hat is. You couldn't get more American if you tried, didn't it? He wears this fucking big branded snapback hat. Make her make her great again. This nonsense slogan that means absolutely nothing. It's like when DSP says meaningful content. This means absolutely nothing. Um, you know, he's standing in front of people who are probably all middle class, working class people who he legitimately would not piss on if they're on fire. If these people were on fire, he wouldn't even spit on them, right? But yet they're all there behind him, hoping that he's going to be the ones to kind of free them from their tyranny, free them from their complaints, free them from their pain, put food on their table, allow them to have more... Like, it's just like, I don't know, I don't know. I, I, find him, I find him astonishing, astounding, incredible. But I also find the defense of him from people to be really odd, considering the things that he says. But this Rogan clip is gonna gag you this rogan clip will definitely gag you so let's continue with this and you think you're gonna get that you're gonna not hire americans and you're gonna sell the cars to us now we're gonna put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the we're gonna kill every chinese person in america every day you don't hire an american and if you don't ignore our phone calls we're gonna double and kill more people it's like <laughs> okay cool and you're not gonna be able to sell those guys if i get elected now if i don't get elected it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole that's going to be the least of it it's going to be a bloodbath for the country that'll be so what else could he mean by that if i don't get elected it's going to be a bloodbath i'm sorry but if, if you're running for the president if you're a former president if you're at that level of office you should know how to use your words way better than that like it's gonna be a bloodbath like what else could that mean <laughs> you know like again I'm, I'm not somebody that gets on too much what he says and shit i understand the mainstream media can twist what he says but come on brother so watch rogan try and defend this just listen to rogan try and defend this this is fucking brilliant rogan's brain kind of breaks when robert Hyde kind of pushed back on him just listen be the least of it if this election if this election isn't one i'm not sure that you'll ever have another election in this country does that make sense <laughs> i don't no. think you're gonna have another election in this country if we don't win this election i don't think you're gonna have another election or certainly not an election that's meaningful and we better get out or we better i actually say that the date remember this november 5th i believe it's going to be the most important date in the history of our country I, I really did wish he said that it's going to be a bloodbath i wish he said that remember the date november it's going to be a bloodbath i wish he would have said that just to fucking end it right there believe that so that's what he said well that sounds pretty bad that it, sounds it like sounds, the flight 93 election argument that if i don't was, win the country's over but exactly. what he was yeah but what he's talking about is the subversion of our economy and the Whoa. the subversion of our democracy that we'll never have an election again i don't think he's saying that it'll be a bloodbath in terms of a civil war he's saying well, the no, economy is going to be like destroyed there was no I, I was listening for that i was thinking maybe he meant it as a metaphor speech. i didn't hear any i mean the bloodbath is it's an unfortunate it, term but what he's <laughs> the bloodbath is an unfortunate term it's an unfortunate set of circumstances that led me to raping you young woman you know what can we do shit happens <laughs> it's an unfortunate it's unfortunate that i called you a fucking whore mother what can we do these things happen <laughs> he's not i don't think he's saying it's a civil war it sounded to me like he was it sounded to me like you know if he doesn't win there will be violence 
Right. You'd but, have to really give him a hell of a lot of benefit about of the, doubt, the economy. So he's talking, he was talking about, about the econ- no. It was he's an talking about China he building was talking, plants. He's he, talking about all these things and saying that, that if he doesn't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a mess. I don't think he's. Speci- I mean, I think he would elaborate on that if he was saying there'll be violence. I, and you know what's funny about this? He says all this stuff about Trump, but then he doesn't want to interview him. I wonder why. He's made it very clear in, in other pods I've listened to. He's kind of insinuated some on some occasions, but I get the again. I get the feeling from what I remember of hearing from Rogan whenever Trump's name was mentioned in terms of an interview. He's not really interested in it, but I wonder why. If he thinks Trump is really misrepresented and the media kind of take his words out of context, blah 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 blah. Why not have him on your platform? I think he knows if you got Trump to sit down on the GRE for an uninterrupted three-hour conversation, he'd say some even more nutty shit <laughs> than he usually does. And unfortunately for Rogan, it'd be perfectly attached to him and he could never shake that. That's why he doesn't want to have him. So he defends him as much as you want, but he won't have him on his show, will he? Hmm. I wonder why. I don't think that's what he's saying. I think he's saying destruction of our economy, uh, the destruction of our... It, you know... He makes a lot of asides. So he was talking about the economy. That's true. And then he said, if I'm not elected, and then he makes an aside about what would happen to the country if he... So look, we might disagree on this. We might disagree. We surely disagree on our priors. It's surely the wrong way to say it. Surely. We Mm -hmm. both agree on that. Yeah. It's an unfortunate term to use. For him to... (laughs) I love the the term, it's an unfortunate term to use. It's almost like when people say, I misspoke. No, you didn't misspeak. You lied. <laughs> you know what I mean? This new term nowadays people use, I misspoke. No, you lied. You purposely misrepresented me, a.k.a. you're full of fucking shit. Unfortunate phrase, an unfortunate term. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. But it doesn't yes. sound to me as though the media took that one out of context. In con- well, they swore- I just rewatched the longer video on closed captioning. It yeah. Cut it off. The video we watched cuts it off right after he says a bloodbath. Oh, and let's continue to oh. Sort of say oh, let's see. Get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. <clears throat> that's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. In this, in that phrase, in that sentence, when he says it's going to be a, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. He could easily tighten it up. He could easily clear it up and say, hey, it's going to be a bloodbath if I don't get elected economically. Mexi Salsa, appreciate Blood you. Bloodbath can be used in an electoral context when one party sheets the bed, <laughs> losing badly. But that's not WTF, he said, Joe. Ride his peace harder, why don't you? Yeah, big up NJ Ranger, appreciate you. Big up Mexican Salsa, I appreciate you. Watch this video, please. You can skip around if you must. What's the video, brother? Mexican Salsa. You know my computer's fucking crazy, brother. I might have to save that for another time, my friend. You know my computer's fucking... My computer's a bit wild. Is it is still there? Let's see, look, it doesn't even go off anymore. I don't know why it doesn't go off. Huh? But big up um, NJ Ranger and Mexican Salsa. Appreciate both of you. As you can see, for some reason, my thing doesn't go off anymore when it comes up. I'm not too sure. But um, you know how it is. <laughs> but they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. A friend of mine, all he does is build car manufacturing. Okay, so he's back on the economy. Yeah. Yeah, he was- I'm sorry, but... Is that a really good... Would you want somebody like that to be leading your country anyway? What kind of communication skills is that? It's going to be a bloodbath if I don't get elected. My friend who makes cars, it's like, what? Like, can you finish up that first bit that you said about a bloodbath, please? What do you mean by that? Do you mean economically? Do you mean societally? Like, what do you mean? Do you mean it elect- electorally? Like, can you clear that up that first bit? So talking about your friend that makes cars. He, that's no, no, what no, wait, wait. But he made... An, but the aside... It was not about the economy. The aside was him making one of these typical asides about how you know how important he is. All right, we, you know, Joe. I think we're not going to settle this. Yeah. I think. Look, I I do agree uh, that the media, as a progressive left leaning institution like universities, has violated its duty uh, many times to the truth and thereby lost the trust of much of the country. Um, most of the people who work in these industries, I think, are wonderful and are trying mm-hmm. to do a good job. But the net effect, and this is my point about structural stupidity, during our culture war, institutions that have had very little viewpoint diversity have been subject to uh, to um, hijacking by those with a political agenda. So I agree with you about that. Um, 
uh, although I disagree with you about what that comment from Donald Trump meant. It just it sounded to me like it was not taken out of context. Well, he was talking about the, about the economy, though. No, but he wasn't. Anyway, Rogan doesn't want to let go of the fact that <clears throat> Trump did a really big oopsie <clears throat> and said a really weird, horrible, terrible thing. Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah. Name the movie. Uh, Dune? Dune part two? <laughs> Dune part two. That's what it was. Big up, big up Al. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you for the fucking super chat, Al. Big up, Al. Big up, Al. Um, yeah, man. Fucking crazy situation. It's sad to see Rogan like this. Rogan, or before, would have never been this staunchly defending this nonsense point because what Trump said was kind of shitty. Um, it is what it is. You know, kind of move on. But defending it and trying to paint it as if he was talking about the economy when you know what he was talking about especially with his history with fucking jan 6 and stuff like you know let's be real um if there's one president out there that's going to enjoy a full-on civil war and a bloodbath with fucking trump he would literally be dancing in the streets if that shit was to happen he'd fucking love it he would love it and maybe half of maybe there's maybe there's a maybe there's a percentage of americans that also might enjoy it like a legit civil war maybe you guys need that to kind of get your blood pumping, you know, to kind of put everybody's jujitsu in fucking, you know, in, you know, to put your jujitsu into action. Everybody pretending to be a gun guy or gun girl can actually, you know, get to work and actually figure out, can you actually fire a gun? Can you actually take somebody out? <laughs> All those guys that have fucking underground bunkers, does your shit actually... Was excited to see a random stream, but then I started watching Rogan talk about Trump. What else you got, Clem? <laughs> <laughs> Rogan loves Trump, man. Rogan loves him so much. And it's weird because I keep saying, if you love the guy so much, have him on your show. That's what I can't understand. Why doesn't why doesn't Rogan want Trump on his show? I know why, because he doesn't want that stink on him. He knows. If he gives Trump if he gives Trump three hours to just talk, he's gonna say some absolute psycho shit. <laughs> That's going to be in a permanent internet records. And it's going to be associated with Rogan. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want that stink. So he's he's all well and good defending him from his little ivory tower in his big comfy fucking podcasting studio. But he doesn't want to get him across the table. He doesn't want that picture. He doesn't want to be publicly associated with Trump at all. I love it. I fucking love it. It's fucking hilarious. But big up Rogan. Big up Trump to some extent. Um, let's not big up blood baths, by the way. We don't want blood baths. But yeah. What can you do? What can you do?